Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today's guest is Jonathan Hung, and he's managing partner over at Entrepreneur Ventures. Jonathan, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Adam, for having me. All right, Jonathan. So, hey, we got a hot topic today. So we're going to talk about angel investing, how to become an angel investor, what it takes, how to be successful, your background as well in investing and otherwise. So we got a lot to talk about. And just to get us kicked off here, we'll start this episode the way that we start them with our Mission Matters Minute. So Jonathan at Mission Matters, our aim and our goal is to amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. So that's what we do. Jonathan, what mission matters to you? My goal in life now, what I think I'm meant to do is to help, really help entrepreneurs get their startup grudge off the ground. I think mm -hmm. the best entrepreneurs are the ones that have a chip on their shoulder, right? These are the ones who don't want to work nine to five. Right. I mean, when you look at early stage investing, it's not about the numbers because there are no numbers. It's not quantifiable <laughs> at all. I mean, people think it's like, oh, how much revenue you got going? Like, nope. it's really like when I do angel investing or pre-seed investing for entrepreneur, like mm -hmm. I care about the founder. Like, mm. do you have grit? Are you somebody who I can trust? Not mm. with the money, but trust that you're not going to give up or you're not going to just at the slightest, like, oh, my obstacle yeah. that you crumble. It's like you see a lot about that. Like, if this is not for the faint of heart, it absolutely not. I mean, I see myself as a high school counselor. My mission mm -hmm. is that, look, I'm here to get you to your Series A. That's the next best investor, gets you to college, the growth stage, right? Mm -hmm. Because really, you don't have product market fit yet. You're trying to get there. I think everyone thinks, like, oh, five years down the line, it's going to be great. Like, let's just get through the year. Mm. How did you get into this? How did you get into wanting to work with and help entrepreneurs? Like, where where'd that start for you? Yeah, I came back home to take over my family business back in 2012. We had a contract manufacturing business, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. my father got sick, and I had to take over. And I was just a, a lowly project manager working at Cummins in Shanghai for less than nine months, came home, and right away I was groomed to be the president. At the same time, that was my dad's baby. And mm -hmm. I wanted something else. I had a background in uh, being a financial advisor, working at Morgan Stanley, UBS. Heard about Silicon Beach. I'm based here in Los Angeles. And I'm like, oh, let me listen and get to know mm -hmm. what that means. What is angel investing? What is venture capital? What is startups? And got my first taste of it doing that as an angel, writing small checks here and there. And developed it into becoming a VC in 2018. Because starting in 2012, but running at the same time my family business, being an entrepreneur. What What do you think draws you to working with entrepreneurs? Because and I'll speak for myself, entrepreneurs. I'm, you're not putting these words in your mouth. I'm putting them out there. They're, we can be a no. pain, man. Especially founders are. We're passionate. We got ideas. We work hard. We're going, going, going. But like, not there's there's uh, easier things to do sometimes. What 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 keeps you in the game working with entrepreneurs and like so attracted to that? Because it's the excitement. Mm. I think when you're a really good investor, early stage, you got to be a gambler. You know, yeah. you like the thrill. Like, why do people go to the casino, right? Is it just about making as much money as possible? Sure, that matters to most people, right? But it's the winning part. It's like that satisfaction of like, oh, my God, we did this. We went, we scaled from nothing to to making 10000 a month, and now we're going to try to 10x that to be 100000 a month. And it, it's that thrill that it's not one direction, but it's not like a straight line. And I think this is so true. The lie of academia is, and people think it's so important, like, look, I have all the degrees on the planet. I went to all the best schools. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. In real life, you're not given A and B and solve for mm -hmm. C. Like, it's a clean board. Like, I always tell people, going to all these universities or colleges I did, it was just to show that I could do something and mm -hmm. finish and mm -hmm. that I'm dependable. At the end of the day, you still have to have the ability to really pivot all the time mm -hmm. and think off your feet. And that's what's exciting, right? Like, I don't want to do a boring nine-to-five job. It, that yeah. doesn't excite me. Mm -hmm. What kind of industries are you looking at, like, in general? Like, I know you, I know you mentioned founders, like, you, your founder, I believe, founder-led, founder and you're mm -hmm. definitely attracted to that. But what industries do you, do you look at? 
Oh, I just from my background, look, I'm not going to lie and say, oh, I know everything about AI. I need to get better at it, right? But yeah. I really feel, and I don't like people who say they're generalists because you can't be great at everything in the beginning. So what I really consider my core is that I'm a good understanding of consumer tech and then CPG and then a little bit into enterprise tech, right, and SaaS businesses, right? It's a totally different business model when you're trying mm. to sell just a pure product versus like you're trying to have great SDR selling a product that has an average order value of 30000 to a big enterprise company, right? You see it. Mm-hmm. But there's things, similar things, right? I think the biggest hires you do in the beginning, obviously, is the founder itself, the CEO, president, whatever. But you either have to find a CTO or you are that CTO or you have a business person who's great at BD and sales or you're that person. That's it. Mm. That's the team. No one does this by themselves. So let's go further into what you're looking for in, as a founder or in founders. You mentioned that grit's important, but, but what else? Like, what else are you looking at? Because a lot of people, oh. I mean, how can you tell? Like, you, you talk to somebody, they're excited, they're into it, and then how do you know that they're going to stay into it, right? <laughs> if they actually follow up. Like, mm-hmm. I, I got to this point where, like, I think people don't get it. Like, in the beginning, I was so, wow, I wide open, thinking so mm-hmm. great, you know, my God, everything's going to be wonderful. Only most, like a Pollyanna. And you get a little jaded becoming a venture capitalist. You absolutely do because you think people match your energy on a phone mm-hmm. call. And I always tell people like, look, you could be a great actor, but can you do this 24 seven, mm-hmm. 365 mm-hmm. days? And then Daniel Day Lewis can't act and stay in character for that long. Like who you really are comes out. And I think the most important trait in an entrepreneur is that you have to not overpromise and underdeliver. Mm-hmm. Like if you're going to say something in a meeting, like I expect you to do it. You know, like mm-hmm. it's not my job to think, oh, you're going to be the next unicorn. I mean, you have to do as much work as me because that's the thing. Like I'm not spending 24 hours on the on the project that you're doing. I'm just not. I'm for at least for entrepreneur. I'm trying to find the best 150 to 200 companies every fund I raise, and my number one goal is to return capital to my LPs. My number two goal is to find the best entrepreneurs who I want to spend the time the most time because mm. that's what's equal for all of us. We have the same amount of time every day. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you're the president of the United States or the richest man in the world or just somebody who works a nine to five job. It's the same amount of time. How do you spend mm-hmm. your seconds and minutes? So if you lie to me, but you can't follow through, then how do you actually think you're going to be that exit founder? Yeah, yeah. Just shifting focus slightly here, the partnership with Entrepreneur Media, how, how'd that come about? Oh, it's it's so funny. I got that opportunity because of one of my investments. Unfortunately, mm. it didn't work out. But luckily for me, that they also invested. And we could share the war story of how that, I don't want to name that company, that yeah, failed. Yeah. But what we got to get to know each other through mm-hmm. that CEO who introduced us. And they were looking for an opportunity to branch out of just reporting, right, and writing about entrepreneurship. How about also investing in entrepreneurs as well? Not, mm. not just your money, but also giving the right media attention, right? Introducing to the right partners, right? That's what's really important. I always tell people, we don't write the biggest checks. We write twenty five, fifty thousand initially, but it's the time we spend with you and how much mm-hmm. marketing time, how much our channel partners can help. And that's a big bucket that I look at. Like, yeah. I don't think I can help you. I don't think we're the right fit because, like, if you're trying to do cancer research, what can an entrepreneur do for you? We're not PhD doctors here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good, good, good point there. What is the, like, how do you normally find your deal flow? Like, where does that come from? Like, how are you finding these opportunities? You got to go out all the time. Like I go out all mm-hmm. the time. I have a 10 week baby right now, but I still go out. Congratulations. Wait a minute. 10 no, weeks and you, you. and you made time for yeah. me. Come on. Thank you. I'm honored. No, That's amazing. Of Congrats. Of course. No, thank you. Because like I said, I don't have a nine to five job, right? Yeah. Like It's not like, oh, I can unplug or, uh, right there when the, t- the clock strikes five. It really is just also experience and networking, too. Like, that's how I became a, a venture capitalist. Like, as an angel, I had to develop all these relationships. And honestly, I'm a better investor now than I was in the beginning. Because mm-hmm. I didn't have enough relationships, enough contacts to bounce ideas off of. Now, if I yeah. see something that's interesting, I'm going to go to my network. And like, what do you think? What do you like? What am I missing? And then that's the best way of doing it. And also, like, I've been an investor since 2012. Like, I've lost a lot of money. I've made a lot of money. You have to make multiple bets. I think the biggest 
facade. Some people do when they're doing crowdfunding or raising money. It's like, oh, my God, we're going to find that. Like, all our companies are going to be successful. Like, that better – to an LP or an angel investor, you mm-hmm. better have the ability to accept loss. We are not hitting, like, batting uh, 800 here or, or hitting 90% on the mark, right? This isn't, like, three sigmas we're doing here in terms of mm-hmm, confidence. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is very rare that somebody has a, such a, like, batting 300, if we had to use that baseball analogy. It's hard. Yeah, yeah. It's early stage investing. So you have to accept that you have to take multiple shots on goal, that you have to have enough bullets to fire at the target and be able to identify companies that you can at any given moment in that time period, right? Because it Mm -hmm. might be a great idea, but it might not be the right time. Like Mm -hmm. I always tell people like without the iPhone, do you think Uber or DoorDash will be as popular as they are? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You have to have the right timing is everything. Mm -hmm. You mentioned something earlier and I want to go a little bit further into that. And also Mm -hmm. uh, the reason I asked you this question too, is because there will be some entrepreneurs that that are listening to this, that are thinking about like how they should be looking at or should they accept money from an angel investor or, and what that looks like. So the question is, you mentioned channel partners and support, like go Mm -hmm. further into that concept and why when somebody does choose to accept money from a VC or or an angel investor, excuse me, or either that, that, that can be so important. Like, why is that important? Because like, I see this fun as dating. Like, would you get married to somebody after the first date? Mm -hmm. But you got to get to know somebody really well, right? I mean, not all money is good money. I learned that through one of my professors at business school, and it's absolutely true. Like, just because someone has money doesn't mean that they're the right partner for you. Mm -hmm. So it's times are tough. Like, I always have this joke where, like, if I ever was to write an autobiography or something about venture capital, like, I would call, I would title it In Case of Emergency. That would be (laughs) the the title of my book. Because it's like, you think about it, you go into a doctor, right? Who's your emergency contact? Yeah, who yeah. Gonna, who's your ride or die person to help you? I've had my dad. You're like, my John, mom. hey, John, we're in this yeah. together, man. You, you wrote yeah. us a check. I need your help. I'm looking for A, B, C, X, Y, Z. What can you do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, that's the kind of person you want in the, the beginning, mm-hmm. right? Like, hey, late stage, totally different, all right? You're yeah. not going to get, like, Mark Andreessen on the call every day. I mean, like, it ain't going to happen. But initially with me. Hey, Mark, by the yeah. way, I need you to send the – no, go ahead. <laughs> Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 just funny. I mean, because like that's like like we've given you money to figure it out. Mm-hmm. When I do early stage here, it's like no, we are. It's a true partnership. It is a marriage. It's gonna last a long time. Like the funny thing I think about is like some of my investments. It takes ten, fifteen years. Mm. The very minimum to see success. Like if you think like my biggest. Re- not regret, but I think like the biggest thing that got me when I became an angel investor is like my mm-hmm. first investment ever, we exited in 10 months. That, oh. that's like, that's like, yeah, that's Hold like, on. Like so you must, I've never heard that. Right I've away. never heard that story. So you were feeling real good on yourself on that one, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, that's man, amazing. Easy, right. And then like, oh. it's just like, People get shocked by that, that like, what, when people talk about the Midas list or talk about how great they are at a veteran mm-hmm. as a VC, like, it's kind of one or two companies. You're like, like one for one, I'm me. done. One and done. Yeah. I'm done. This oh, is too easy. Yeah, need. right. <laughs> that's all you need. I mean, like, you actually think you're going to spend the same amount of time with each of your portfolio uh, companies okay. after a certain amount of time? Yeah, There's yeah, no yeah. way. There's no, mm-hmm. and, and people like to challenge me, like, well, how are you going to like take care of all those companies? You're investing 150 to 200 in each batch of your each fund. And I'm like, well, it's called natural selection. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, 18 to 24 months from now, yeah. 80% of these companies will not make it. They mm-hmm. just will not make it for whatever reason. And mm-hmm. I will be spending the time on the 20% that do. And that's mm-hmm. what I'm going to identify. Because I tell my LPs, I'm here to help us have better data to invest yeah. again. I mean, that's the most important thing because, look, once you have more data, you can make better decisions. Like, mm-hmm. I really, I, I had a professor, he had, the greatest lesson he taught me was getting to Six Sigma or getting to, like, 90% confidence takes a lot of time and mm-hmm. money. 
Mm-hmm. Like when we do venture capital investing, we are not going to have a, like anything close to that 99.9999% mm-hmm. confidence to accuracy. So if I can get one sigma confidence on an investment, you mm-hmm. go to Vegas right away. If I have 70% mm-hmm. like good feeling about it, let's do it. Because from going to 70 to 80% is even more time and money that you just don't have in the mm-hmm. beginning. So if I have confidence, I make that bet every time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, that What a great first story for that first investment. I got to share one with you. I don't even know if I've ever shared this in the podcast, but it cracks me up. So when I started, I haven't been in finance in over eight years. I've been full-time in media mm-hmm. doing this. But um, when I started, I had about 15 or 14 years, excuse me, in that business. And I remember when I first started, I was 16 years old and this was 19 off the top of my head, 1998. So prior to the tech rack and my introduction to just a little 16 year old, right? A kid Uh uh, to the stock market was think about that bubble that was building right there. Oh, the stock Mm -hmm. market is easy. You just invest in anything that has dot com at the end of it and it goes up like as a young 16 year old. That's Mm -hmm. Obviously, I wasn't handling clients money. I wasn't licensed. I was working in the IRA department. (laughs) doing something that was legal. I couldn't, you can't invest for clients at that age. But my little 16 year old mind was like, oh, stock market's easy. I don't know what they're talking about. (laughs) That was my perception of like finance. You just invest in anything that has dot com after it and it goes up and you make money. Stock market's easy. So, so for you, (laughs) that was my introduction. Obviously I learned otherwise and I went on to a long career and that's fine. But (laughs) But for mm-hmm. you, yeah, mm-hmm. I just pick a company and and I exit in ten months. It's easy being an angel. <laughs> That's great. And was uh, it was pretty, and venture capital too? Not even like a publicly traded company, right? Something. To like hop. I know that. that's ridiculous. That's an amazing story though. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the golf yeah. shot that you get that one good golf shot, and then you got to keep going because you did. <laughs> That or that yeah. one good hole, <laughs> and, it, and it's because I didn't want short-term capital gains. I reinvested that money right away, and that company, that second, that company I invested in, to this day, it's doing well, but mm. it still hasn't exited. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> twelve years later or eleven years later. Yeah, they're still doing oh. good. They're still alive. Man, no, that, well, I'm glad. I'm glad about that piece for sure. That's awesome. Let's talk to the maybe potential or future angel investors for a moment or two out there mm-hmm, that are listening. Sure. What, for people that are listening, that maybe they they're thinking about going down that route. What kind of things would you tell them now? Benefit of hindsight. What kind of like advice? Get get on the get on the high horse for a moment or two. Yeah, yeah. I was actually talking to a a 29 year old kid yesterday, and I say he's a kid because I'm 41 now, but like that's mm-hmm. when I started. I was around 28, 29 when I got into angel investing. Mm. And I said, don't be a psycho like me, all right? Like, (laughs) I'm a psycho because, like, I did so many deals. Do as I I say, not as I do. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. (laughs) Because I I would say, like, even to this day, I'm, like, 80, 90%. Not in the beginning, right? But I gradually Mm. I got to this point. I'm like, look, do not invest what you can't lose. That's an effort, right? Because this is going to be locked up for a very long time. Mm-hmm. So I tell angel investors, like, look, you think, like, we're going to exit right away? It's going yeah. to take a while. And so please, please, please don't, like, bet too much money. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, please don't just write a $1,000 check and think you're going to be a millionaire. So, like, mm-hmm. temper expectations a little bit, right? Like, yeah. it, to me, I tell people it's not the first check that makes money. It's the follow-on capital. Because if you look, like, I, the difference in most funds and my fund is this. I don't have any follow-on capital. When I say mm-hmm. I'm going to invest the entire 5 to $10 million that I raised, it's done. First check. That's it. Like, and then the benefit, what I do for my LPs or angel investors that are in my network, then you write the next check. But mm-hmm. uh, not on all the 100, like, the 100% companies I invest in, on the 20% that survived. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Because it's better data. Now you can make a better bet because you have more information. Like, this is the only game where insider information is okay. Yeah. I'm not going to jail if I know the CEO intimately, what's going on with the sales, what's going on with his hiring, all that. It's totally perfectly legal because it's privately held. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what you do, right? If you had that opportunity in the public market, you take it, but you go to jail. In this, it's like, it's totally fine. And so I t- as an angel investor, I tell people, do not bet everything at once, right? Mm-hmm. Like save enough bullets for later because that's what's going to make up for all the losses you had in the beginning. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. 
Well, Jonathan, this has been a lot of fun getting to know you, getting to know about the, the early days and where you're oh, at cool. now. If, if somebody's listening to this and they want to connect or follow up or continue the conversation, like how do people follow you? Yeah, please. LinkedIn is a great source, right? Just uh, put my name in there and connect and just say something, right? Don't, please don't just like add me and then you think I'm going to accept you. I got like over 500 people I haven't added. All right? I got to like, you got to tell me something. All right. Like, I don't know. You might be a boss. Like, I don't, I'm not here for clout. I'm here to have like, what can I tell people like, oh, yeah. why am I connected? Because of this reason. That could be mm. one little story, one little thing. Also, you could go to our website, entrepreneur.vc. I uh, had to pay a good amount of money for that <laughs> domain. Oh, yeah, you did. Uh, oh, God. yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank God Entrepreneur paid for paid me back. That's a great resource there to pitch us ideas. And also I have my own personal website, JonathanHung.com. So when that GoDaddy message came up, I was like, yeah, I probably should buy my own domain. <laughs> yeah, 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 agreed. <laughs> Fantastic. And for everybody listening, just so you know, we'll put the links in the show notes so you can just click on them and head right on over. And speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters and you haven't hit the subscribe or follow button yet, I highly encourage you hit that button because this is a daily show each and every Every day we're bringing you new content, new stories, new entrepreneurs, and hopefully new inspiration that can help you along the way in your journey as well. So again, hit that subscribe or follow button and uh, you will get the notification tomorrow because you will get a new episode. And uh, Jonathan, again, thank you so much for making some time for us. And again, congrats so much on the 10 month old baby oh, over there. So you. congrats, man. I'm really, really happy for you. Thank you so much. Adam. It was a pleasure. I'm glad we did this. Thank you.